Hey guys, and welcome to today's video. Today, we have two separate sovereign citizens in Judge Lacoste's courtroom. Now, I included the first one because it really exemplifies Judge Lacoste's control of her courtroom, her sense of humor, and her understanding of the positions sovereign citizens tend to take. It's pretty short, so let's begin. All right, Mr. Sinclair, do you want to come forward, please? People of the state of Michigan versus Damien Antoinette Dante Sinclair. Uh, file 237467SM. Mr. Sinclair is present in court uh, with his attorney, Nancy Schaub, and the people are here through Chief Assistant Prosecutor Kristen Cass. Mr. Sinclair, I'll give you an opportunity or through your counsel to state your objections here this morning before we get going to the are you going to state objections to the court's jurisdiction this morning you know are you are you declaring your sovereign citizen status this morning sir i would like to reserve all my rights per ucc 1-308 of course you would but unfortunately for you these charges are criminal and not civil or commercial so reserving your rights under the ucc is about as useful as a deflated ass cushion okay so that's all I really have for the first video, as this was just a pre-trial conference. A future hearing date was scheduled, and I'll keep you posted. Now the next video is a bit longer, and it truly shows the benefits of sovereign citizens who accept the free lawyer that nearly all of them qualify for. All right, good afternoon, Mr. Peltola. Can you hear me adequately? Yes, I can, Honor. How are you doing? Good, thank you. How are you today? Not too bad. Feeling a little rough, sore from being in a holding cell three days, but other than that, I'm okay. All right, let me call you, matter so we're on the record, please. People of the state of Michigan versus Drew James Peltola, 247819SM. Mr. Peltola appears from the Dickinson County Jail. Counsel at first appearance is Abby Anderson, who appears via video Zoom. And the prosecution is not here today of their own choosing. Uh, Mr. Pelta, before we went on the record, indicated he could hear me adequately and he was all right other than being sore from being in the holding cell for three days. In respect to the matter then, Mr. Peltola, um, I do have an advice of rights here with your signature. Um, I do see a, it looks like the copyright insignia. I know that we have um, discussed the issue of the sovereign citizen. In the past, Mr. Peltola, can you tell me what your position is today, please? After tell me what your full legal name is, if you would. Okay, uh, I'm Appalachian, known as all capital letter Drew James Peltola, with a common law copyright as a sui juris, human as a non citizen, a not American national. That's defined in the United States Code. I'd like to have my lawyer finish talking. She told me not to talk unless she could talk first. Hey, at least he listens to his attorney. Now, the question is, how long can he shut up for? All right, thank you. Go ahead, Ms. Anderson. Thank you, Your Honor. I have discussed these matters with Mr. Peltola. First, he agrees to be referred to as Mr. Peltola for purposes of these hearings. We have gone over both the advice of rights for misdemeanor and bond violation. He indicated he understood and signed both. Um, as to the allegations, we went over the maximum penalties. We would waive the formal reading. He is tendering not guilty pleas and requested an attorney. Ms. Mashik Lassala has assigned Nancy Schaub to represent him. All right, very well. As indicated by Ms. Anderson, Mr. Peltola is, has agreed for purposes of uh, his criminal prosecution to be referred to as Drew James Peltola. His position in respect to how he should be recognized legally has been stated for the record and is preserved for the record as well as stated on the uh, advice of rights form concerning both the general misdemeanor advice of rights um, although the bond violation advice of rights doesn't so indicate the court will recognize this position for purposes of both advice of rights Concerning the matter then, um, is this a good mailing address for you, Mr. Peltola on River Street in Niagara? Yes, Your Honor. Um, I'm just trying to move back into Michigan. So I've been working and I, that's the address that I use because that's my domicile. I always return to every day or once a week or whatever. Because the Michigan residents, I'm not even sure. Um, I would not like to talk about that in court, but I'm trying to move back into Michigan. I'm just having a heck of a time doing it. All right. 
So this is what I'm going to do then, Mr. Peltola. Over there. Let's see if I have one in my file first. Ms. Anderson, I don't see a waiver of extradition. It sounds like he's going to go need to go back and forth to Wisconsin, and we'll address that momentarily. In respect to the matter, though, Mr. Peltola, there is a waiver of extradition form over there at the jail. I'll, I'll have to have you sign that if you need to go into Wisconsin as part of this. In regard to the matter, then, what? Um, how do you want me to sign this? I'm, if you want my copyright, do you want me sui juris? Just so you understand, like, I wasn't trying to harm you or any other woman. Hold on. Did you just say you aren't trying to harm her or any other woman? You know normal people who don't harm women don't typically say weird shit like that. And regarding your question of how she would like you to sign your waiver of extradition, well that depends on you. Do you actually want to get out of jail? Then I suggest you abandon the son juris and copyright crap and use your government name that your mother gave you. Go ahead. Do you, want my, what? do you want my copyright on this? Do you want me as a human or me as a sui juris, non-citizen national? I just want your signature and the date and whatever you want to put in addition to that is fine with me. All right, thank you. Can I have a pen? Your Honor, while Mr. Peltel is signing that, we did discuss the waiver of extradition. He just wanted that answer clarified prior to signing, but he is aware of what the waiver of extradition is. Very good. Thank you. All right. I'll enter not guilty, please, on behalf of Mr. Peltela. Ms. Anderson indicates that he's qualified and he is being assigned by MIDC. Ms. Schaub, we're going to set bond violation hearing. We might as well do the pretrial at the same time. And a jury trial as follows. Do you want the jury trial to be Yes, just, just, just to be safe. Okay. Pretrial conference and bond violation hearing on February 21st at 1.45 p.m. Jury trial, March 8th at 9 a.m. All right, you'll get these dates in writing, Mr. Peltola. In respect yes. to the waiver of extradition, then I'm... I want to go over it with you briefly as well. All right, cool. In I respect, can wait. You want me to stop filling this out? Um, really, all you need to do, yeah, go ahead. You finish, and then I'll go, and then I'll talk. You let me know when you're ready. I'll just sign it real quick on the bottom of it, and they can take care of the rest of it. I'll sign it properly. I'm actually okay with this type of sovereign citizen, one who LARPs in his mind, LARPs with his family at home, but when it comes to his freedom, he snaps back to reality and listens to his damn lawyer. Uh, the bottom law might be wrong. Uh, it's been a while since I've read the Unified Corp, but I believe this is right. I signed it for you correctly. So. All right, perfect. Okay. All right, if you give that to the jailer, Mr. Peltel, I want to go over with you what it means to sign that waiver. I know we've done this before, but I'll just refresh your memory. Oh. And let me start by saying, so long as you come back to court voluntarily for all your court appearances, this does not become oh, yeah. relevant. But if you don't come back to court, let's say, for example, you stay in Niagara or somewhere else like that, normally you're entitled to what's called an extradition hearing before you are returned to Michigan to fight the charges that you didn't come back to court for. Yes. Under an extradition hearing umbrella, you have the right to an open court hearing. You have the right to have a lawyer at that hearing. And if you're indigent or without funds, one is assigned for you. The purpose of an extradition hearing allows you to challenge the legality of your arrest and return to Michigan. For example, you could demand issuance and service of a Michigan governor's warrant for your arrest. You have the right to obtain a writ of habeas corpus. Like I said, all to challenge the legality of your arrest and return to Michigan. When I you sign a waiver, no. what? I, I said I won't resist, ma'am. I just, I'm just explaining to you what that document is that you're signing, okay, for the record. That's all. I'm not suggesting, implying, or anything else. I'm just explaining, all right? Thank you. All right. So when you sign that waiver, then, what that means is, and like I said to start with, so long as you come back to court, everything is hunky-dory or everything is all right. But if you don't come back, when you sign that waiver, you have given up your right to that type of a hearing that I just explained. Do you understand that? Yes, Your Honor. I love how quickly these sovereign citizens are willing to contract with the courts with their proper name as long as it means they get out of jail. All right. So that's what that means. So when I'm setting bond, I need that form back because I'm going to do the following in respect to your bond. And this can cover both the bond violation and the... 
underlying charge of disorderly. All right, first off, you must sign a waiver of extradition as a condition of your bond. So long as you do, you can go back and forth between Michigan and Wisconsin for residency, court appearances, family visitation. If it expands beyond that, talk to your lawyer first, okay? Yes, Your Honor. All right. You are not to purchase, possess, or consume alcohol or non-prescribed controlled substances. You must submit to random PBTs and drug screens as a condition of your release. Don't go into yes. businesses that sell alcohol for use inside, such as bars and taverns. Do not engage in any assaultive, threatening, harassing, or intimidating behavior towards any person while you are on bond. All right, so you are in one of those unique positions, Mr. Peltola, where you have come before the court for your arraignment already behind you or what you're being arraigned on is both the underlying charge and a bond violation. So usually people will have an underlying charge and then whatever, week two, three later, they come back with the bond violation. And when people are arraigned, I always give them a talk and tell them that if you come back with a bond violation, you're going to make it really hard for me to say, gee, I should let you back out into the community again. You, however, have not had that talk. You are having it today and you are having it on both the underlying charge and the bond violation. So he's already had a bond violation, but he hasn't yet had the talk. Something tells me that no amount of talking is going to convince this idiot that laws actually apply to him. So my pep talk is this, Mr. Peltola. I'm going to set the bond accordingly and give you the benefit of the doubt. But if you come back in here with another violation, I'm going to say, gee, Mr. Peltola, I had the talk with you and you went out and did the same thing I told you not to do. So I'm telling you, don't violate your bond and make me have a reason to keep you in custody pending resolution of your case. I'll set your bond right now at 1,000 PR. That's on both the bond violation and the underlying charge. They're going to let you back out, Mr. Peltola. Don't go back out and start drinking and do this again, because like I said, you'll leave me no choice. All right? Well, oh, Your Honor, I, honest God, I'm not even on drugs anymore. I wasn't sick. The only thing, the only reason. Hold on, um, hold on, hold on, hold on, hold on. Nope. I can see Miss uh, Anderson almost doing cartwheels back there. She does not want you to talk until you have a chance to talk to your lawyer. Is that right, Miss Anderson? That is correct, Your Honor. Thank you. All right, Mr. Peltola, do you understand? She wants you to talk to your lawyer before you tell me anything, all right? Yes, I understand, Ms. Lacoste, or Judge Lacoste. Thank you, Mr. Peltola. We will see you soon. Your bond will come over, your writing dates, your lawyers. Make sure you call her um, oh. when you get out and, you know, have a meeting with her. All right, Mr. Peltola? Yes, Your Honor. All right, anything else on this file then, Ms. Anderson? No, thank you, Your Honor. All right, thank you. Have a good day, Mr. Peltola. You as well. Thank you. All right. So it looks like he's going to get a second chance. Now, some of you will call me an optimist and some of you will call me a pessimist. I guess it just depends on whether you like to see sovereign citizens go to jail or not. But I've seen this scenario play out way too many times. And if there's one thing that I know for sure, he'll be back. So if you liked the video, click the like button. If you disliked it, hit the dislike. But don't forget to leave a comment below and subscribe with notifications on so you don't miss any of my content. I'm Team Skeptic, and I'm out.